What's up, everybody? It's your, your favorite Sewickley Academy alum uh, back again with another video. But um, this video is not all negative. There is a lot of uh, positive to discuss towards the end. But there are three things that I got to talk to you about. So again, as I always say, man, get your popcorn, get a cup of tea, sit down and, and just listen and learn. Okay? I got some fun stuff to talk about. So as you guys all know, and I'm not going to go back and and go over everything that, that's happened at Swickley Academy, or if you've seen my two previous videos, and, and just a, a quick synopsis, we'll say, that over the past two years at the Academy, there have been a lot of things that have been going on um, that have been involved with diversity, equity, inclusion. There were some staff that were removed from the school. There were concerned parents who wrote letters to the school who confused DEI with CRT. There was another group of parents that were frustrated by this, that were in support of um, the teachers and the, and the um, administrators that were coming up with the program, the Envision 2024. They wanted some answers. Um, there have just been, there's been a black cloud over Sewickley for uh, the better part of the past two years. And it, it just has not seemed to go away. And um, there's been opportunities for them to really try to grasp a hold of this before it got out of hand. And they just, they really haven't because everything they put out has been very general. It's been very, um, you know, we want to get back to the Sewickley way instead of being fully transparent and really looking at the problem at hand and which is the issue with diversity, equity, inclusion and, and trying to fix it. But, um, I want to I want to get into uh, something. If you guys, like I said, I did my videos, and there was uh, my last video. I had had some some comments on it, and you know when I put these videos out, um, I I I don't expect everybody to agree. And the beauty of this is, like anything else in our society, when we uncover the ugly truth for whatever it is, it should spark conversation. So the two things it does it allows people to really show their true side so you see who's an ally and who's against you but then the most important thing is even if you're against what i believe in we should be able to have a conversation not to come to an agreement so i can better understand you and you can better understand me well i want to talk directly to one individual i don't know if he's going to see this video i hope that he does but there's a gentleman by the name of will rogers if that's what his name is on YouTube. I don't know if that's his real name. But he had a comment about my video, which just solidified and made me want to just be so much more of a impact player and so much more of an advocate of diversity, equity, inclusion for people just like you, Will. So I, I thank you. And I'm gonna read what, what Will said. And Will said, I'm an alum of Sewickley Academy, way before you. I am sorry you graduated under the European woke style of education that was poorly provided to you. You left out the fact that this is a private $35,000 per student per year school. Everyone agrees to the handbook and we all had to abide. Too bad you disagree and you being me. You got incredible privilege to go here so you have zero credibility. So I'm, I'm gonna wanna say this line one more time. Will Rogers said, I had incredible privilege to go to Sewickley Academy and I have zero credibility, which is further evidenced by your views and subscription. So I have no credibility because no one subscribes to my YouTube page. I was never trying to be a vlogger or a YouTuber, but that's okay. Um, and no one has really viewed, maybe like 18 people viewed the video, but that's fine, that's okay. But he finished it with I love, and he said, um, by Felicia in capital letters. So, I'm not gonna lie, that kind of pissed me off. So, I wanna address this to you, Will Rogers, or anybody else that feels the way he does about privilege. You see the color of my skin? I'm a black man. When I went to Sewickley Academy, I went into the academy as a young black man. When I left Sewickley Academy, I left 
as a young black man. You have the audacity to tell me it was a privilege to go to the academy. Well, let me tell you and anybody else that feels the way that you do, how ignorant that you are, let me educate you. So Wickley is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to get a fantastic education. My privilege is not so Wickley Academy. You wanna know why I was privileged, Will, and anyone else that may question or agree with what Will says? My privilege was I had two amazing black parents in my household that sacrificed everything to make sure that I was able to go to Sewickley and get a quality education. I was privileged that my parents were able to get me transportation from the other side of town in the South Hills to get to Sewickley on the other side of town every day. I was privileged that when I had a very successful basketball career at Sewickley, my parents made it to every single game. Sewickley didn't do shit for me. It, I didn't get any privilege. I'm a black man. What kind of fucking privilege would I have? None. So, Will, let me be clear when I say this to you and anybody else. Any black student that comes into the academy, we're not privileged. We go in black. We leave black. It's the same. Now, I'm assuming, I don't know, you might be a white man. And if you are, I'm sure you're privileged. I, as a black man, am not. So anybody else that feels this way, that students have a privilege to go into the academy, it's not a privilege. It's just an opportunity. The privilege comes from the people around you that are able to support you and are able to help you and able to help you maneuver life before and after. All Swickley does is give you an opportunity to network, to give you an opportunity to have a good education, but it's not a privilege, sir. So please take that idea, ball it up, crumble it up, and throw it out the window, because it's not true. So now, the second thing I wanna address, this was a, in response to what Will Rogers said in the YouTube video. This is from a black student. I'm not gonna put his name out there. But it's from a student at Swickley Academy. And before I read this, I apologize. I'm sweating because I'm I'm kind of kind of pissed off when I think about Will Rogers and anyone else who thinks that way. But let's stay focused. So when I read this message, this also is one of the reasons why I'm motivated, inspired, and want to do everything in my power, not only to support students at Swickley Academy, but Remember, I've been a teacher for 17 years, so it's important to me. This is also something that I want to take seriously because I want to make sure that, that the kids are getting what they deserve and what they need. And it's not just about black students, about white students are being able to be exposed to what other minorities are going through. Because again, education is the focus, right? So if education is the focus, don't you want a, a well-rounded education, not a little, you know, inside a, a box of how to learn. We want to expand that box. We want to break those walls down so that there is no box. But, so this is the email or message, I'm sorry, that a student sent to me in response to what Will Rogers said. He said, with this message, my hope is to not dismiss your opinion, but to make you better understand how my privilege as a current student in Swickley Academy has no factor in my human rights and feeling unsafe. I, as a black student at Swickley Academy have been harassed. I have been bullied for being a leader of diversity. I've been called violent due to the school's image of us. I've been called arrogant and irresponsible by the administration, even though I am a respected leader with all A's and B's. What's going on is not right and it should have no effect on my privilege of attending this school. I am extremely grateful to attend this school, as was I, but it doesn't feel like a safe and inclusive environment. And that needs to change regardless of my privilege. So when I when I saw that, the first thing I thought about was, what if that was my son? And even if that wasn't my son, how'd I look at my own black sons and not stand up for 
what's going on and not be an advocate for diversity, equity, and inclusion and not try to speak out on about what is wrong with the academy right now. Now, Dr. Burtwell had put out a video. She sent out an email. I'm sorry, not even, but it was, it was, it was an email, but it was a letter that she had written. It was sent to all the alumni, I'm sure, families and, and, and uh, people that are involved in the Swickley Academy community. And it was very scripted. It was very, um, very uh, robotic. It was, it was just, it didn't feel genuine. And there were words thrown out like diversity. And um, actually, I think I have, I have some, 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 some parts here I gotta read, cause you know, I got my, I got my notes. So there were some, some comments about, uh, let me see, she said, uh, in turn, many of the people within our community have understandably expressed their concerns and frustration with the activities that are distracting us from providing the best educational experience for our students. She says, I sympathize, I sympathize with how it feels for you to see negative coverage of Swickley Academy in the news and on social media. A hallmark has always been academic excellence and that remains true today. I am relying on our four core values, education, educational vigor, character, community, and diversity. And the last thing I'm gonna say is, as alumni or parents of alumni, you know that our students' intellectual pursuit is most fully realized in a temperate, moderate, and apolitical environment where they are taught how to think not what to think. So, sounds well. It sounds good. But still the problem is it's not being addressed what the issue is. And I think the first thing they have to do is they have to own up to what's wrong. They have to. That's the only way the problem is going to be solved is owning up to what has been done wrong and what can be changed to make it better. Now, I said I wanted to finish this video and the last thing I'm gonna discuss on a positive note is I had a conversation with Susan Sauer, Wynn Palmer, and uh, Derek Schindler. And um, they reached out to me and I was very thankful that they did because no one else from the academy reached out to me and not that I'm anything special, not that I'm, I'm, I'm anybody that's important, but I'm very confident and very sure that a lot of people saw my video and I'm sure it floated around and I'm not hard to find. I'm very easy to find. And I was disappointed that no one reached out from the academy, whether it be the board, whether it be anybody, originally when I did the first video to have a conversation. Because really, like I said, the purpose of those videos is not just to bash Swickley Academy. Let me make this clear. I'm an alum of Swickley Academy. Like I said in the previous video, I don't want much to do with the Academy, but I did say that I respect a handful of people that are still there. Those three people that reached out to me are people that I respect and people that I trust. So I was willing to hear what they had to say and I knew they were willing to hear what I had to say. That we could have a conversation and we would be able to understand our perspectives because I, and like everybody else is outside looking in, we're not in the academy. So we don't know the reasons why those members of the staff are let go. We don't know the real climate. We don't know what's really going on. And this is what I said to them was one of the things that the transparency, the lack of transparency from the academy is what is forcing people like me, the alumni, and just the public to assume a certain narrative because they're not saying anything. The re news report is saying that all these things are wrong with um, you know, issues with diversity, equity, inclusion. You have the group Fame had, had separated partnership with Swickley Academy. You have minority parents and even white parents going to the school and protesting. You have you know, uh, Mr. Galeski calling the police and, and there's all these narratives that are negative. And they've said nothing to, 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 to change that narrative. There's been nothing said about what they're going to do to make things better. And this is the conversation that we had. And I was, like I said, I, it made me feel better. I still feel the way that I do. I'm still, I need to see action. And I'm gonna talk about that in a second. But 
I was so glad that, like I said, they did reach out and I appreciate them doing it. I was disappointed, like I said, that people, other anybody else at the Academy did not reach out, but I'm thankful they did because my mindset would have just kept rolling the way it was along with everybody else. But they had a chance to listen to, to what exactly what I've said to you guys who's ever watching this in these videos about my concerns and what I think is a serious issue and the fact that the sort of the, the, the rug has been pulled out from under the academy and there is some truth to what these kids are saying and like what the young man said in the message you know if a, a student is saying they don't feel safe you have to take that seriously and you have to really look at the problem and you have to look at the they have to the academy has to look at themselves in the mirror and say we are not perfect they want to get back to the the, the, the one of the best private schools in Pennsylvania. Well, to do that, you have to evolve. You have to change. You know, like I said before, Swickley Academy, and this is no secret, it was a school that was built on a foundation of Republican and of white ideals and views and philosophies, and, and that's fine. That's great. I don't have a problem with that. But times have changed. The enrollment has changed. The diversity has changed. So those ways of thinking, the old-fashioned ways you can keep some of them, but they have to evolve. They have to change and you have to be honest and say, listen, this stuff is not going to work in today's society because we are not the Sewickley Academy of old. We want to be the Sewickley Academy of new. That's the thing. They got to stop. It's not don't the old Sewickley Academy. Let's, let's forget that. Move away from that. Take those, take that foundation, but just rebuild it, tear it down and rebuild it so it's better, so that it is more inclusive, so that it has more equity, so it makes people feel proud to be there. Because if you do that, they say they want the enrollment to grow. They say they want the community to come together. You gotta do that. They have to do those things. If they don't, it's not. And I talked about this and I hope they heard, I believe they heard, because like I said, the respect they have for me and the the conversation was very good. But the last thing I wanted to say was, and this was the most frustrating thing, but it was a, it was a positive, but it was frustrating for me that it's not talked about, is that Derek had been put in a place of the former diversity, equity, inclusion position. And it's unfair to him I'm disappointed the Academy. It's unfair to him because I know him. I've known him for a little while. I respect him. He is a former Swick Academy student, but the narrative was that he was part of the good old boys network and he was going to be a puppet placed in that position. What was never discussed was what he was doing to make sure to take over that position and make an impact. There was never any discussion about a plan of action. And that's the biggest thing from, from Dr. Burtwell to anybody else. There was never a discussion about his background, what he brings to the table. So we as the community can be like, okay, I want to give this guy a shot. I want to see what he can do because it was unfair. He was put in this position and everyone's like, oh, he's not this. He's not that. He's not, he, he hasn't done this. He hasn't experienced that, but we didn't know that. But nothing was said to say this man is good for this position. He will bring a fresh initiative and a fresh um, way of thinking to this position to help the academy. It was just, hey, this is our new person. You guys got to deal with it. And that's when that narrative was created where it was like, oh, whoa, whoa. Why is he fit for this? Why is he the best person for this when you have this cloud of smoke and this just cluster F that's going on in school and you're putting someone in this position who we don't know has the experience. Now, I'm not going to talk about the things that he explained to me that he's working on, but I will tell you this, that I definitely endorse him. I definitely support him. I definitely think that with time, because it's not going to happen overnight, I think he will be able to do some great things. And I hope that when people see this, um, students or parents, for me, for me as a former alum, give this man your support. Give this man an opportunity to be able to prove to everybody that he is fit for this position, that he is able to make the changes. Give He needs time. 
He needs the time, but we have to support it because this is something he can't do himself. This has got to be a collective of minority families, of white families, of community students. If we don't rally behind him, the change will not happen. And listen, whether you're far left or you're far right, the whole goal in my eyes needs to be on, like what it goes back to, what Dr. Burtwell said, the kids' education, bottom line. I said it before, DI is not CRT. So please take that idea, crumble it up and throw it out the window. It's not CRT, okay? DEI is just an opportunity for students to get a more well-rounded education and to be more exposed and better educated about other cultures around them. And that will allow them to be better so when they leave the academy and they go out to this wonderful world that we love so much, they'll be better prepared. They'll have a better understanding of different cultures, different ways of thinking, different philosophies. But what the academy has got to do but it's Dr. Burtwell, I don't care. I don't, I don't care who it is. But there needs to be something that is either in writing or video to make sure to let the community, those that are supporters of the academy, parents and students, what Derek is doing, why he is qualified for this position, and why he is supporting it. I am doing it on here. I'm saying it. I support this man. This is me, the same person you guys saw the past two videos that I was enraged. I was furious. I was confused. I was frustrated. I, I felt sorry for the students. I felt sorry for anyone involved in the academy, the teachers. But the thing is, and, and right, this is not going to change in, in a couple of days. It's not going to change this year. But there needs to be support for this man. Like I said, I endorse him. I think he is a great fit for this job. I think he has young energy. I think him being a black male that has been through Swickley Academy, that he can relate to the kids. As a former student athlete there, he can relate to from a team perspective. I know he's personable. He's a great guy. He's easy to talk to. I really believe he's a good fit, but the Academy has got to endorse this man so that we as the community can get behind him as well. So I say all this to say my feelings are the same. I have not changed. I have not flipped sides. All of a sudden, I'm just seeing it with rose-colored glasses. I am still irritated by the climate of the academy. I'm still irritated that students are feeling censored and their voices are not being heard. I really hope the academy makes a change to the structure so they can be better. It's like I said, be the newest Swickley Academy. Don't be the old Swickley Academy. The Swickley Academy, even though when I was there, when I thought things were amazing, be better. Be better than when I was there. Make the school great. Make the school a place that people of all cultures, backgrounds, genders, and races feel comfortable, feel accepted, and feel appreciated. And if you don't want to be part of that, you don't have to stay. Use other places you can go. But I really hope the Academy makes these changes. And I, I just want to say a, a, a huge thank you to um, Susan Sauer, who, who's the one that reached out, and and Wynn Palmer for having a conversation with me. And um, like I said, I, I am a huge advocate and supporter of, of Derek. I think he's excellent for the position. I think he's going to do amazing things. And I hope that the next time that I come on and have a video, that the whole video can be positive and moving forward but will rogers if you're listening and anybody else that feels differently about how i feel remember it's not a privilege to go to swickley it's an opportunity peace